This is the third video in the Real World VBA series. We're working through Eric's task. In this video, we're gonna deal with a loop within a loop, another super powerful VBA construct that's gonna allow you to get so much done. Let's get back into the file. And again, before we do anything, we've gotta be clear conceptually about what are we trying to do here. Can you describe in English what we're trying to do? Is it clear enough in your head? Well, we've got one loop uh, in the routine so far, and that loop is looping through the sheets, going from one sheet to the next sheet. You know, we're fairly comfortable with that. There's another loop we're going to put in. That loop is going to loop through each cell on the sheet. So the routine is gonna start at the first sheet, loop through each cell, move on to the next sheet, loop through each cell, and then carry on until it gets uh, to the end of the file. We're gonna set it up dynamically, so if additional sheets are added to the file, uh, the code will be able to handle that. So that's the concept, the loop within the loop. Don't try to do the code unless the concept is clear uh, in your head. So with that set, back into uh, the VBA editor. In the previous series, we put in this super powerful line of code. We're now gonna remove the comment here. Then we're gonna, in fact, I'm gonna put it back in for a second. Then we're gonna think, what kind of loop do we want here? We've already used a for next loop to loop through the sheets. Now we're gonna use a for each loop, which allows us to loop through objects in a collection. The object in this case is gonna be a cell and the collection is gonna be a range of cells. Do something to each cell uh, in a range of cells. In order to control the loop, we need a variable. The famous or not so famous uh, Chris cell uh, variable here. Chris cell as range. So we're saying to Excel, uh, we want to store some information that's a range in this variable. That's going to allow us to, to work through the loop. Now, and now we can delete this annotation here. We're going to say to Excel for each Chris cell, being careful to spell the variable accurately, in this range here. Then we can delete the select method off the end there. So we've started our loop there. What do we do when we start a loop? We always have to finish it so we don't forget it later and get into trouble. So we can say next Chris cell here. And that's it. That's our loop within a loop structure. We've got this loop here, the containing loop if you like. And then we've got this kind of sub loop, you could call it for each uh, within the loop there. How are we gonna test this? Well, a technique I always use for testing is using a message box to extract some information from the VBA editor to help me understand what's going on. So let's say message box, and let's say Chris Cell, then a property of Chris Cell is the address. Remember, we want to understand where VBA, where the VBA editor is looking. What cell is the VBA editor looking at? Use an ampersand there and just a space in speech marks. That's going to separate out two text strings so that we can read them easier. And then we're going to say sheets counter dot name. So just taking that from the from the loop, how we've defined the loop at the top there. What's going to happen now? Never absolutely sure with Excel VBA. Let's save the file. Control S. Then we're going to step through the code. You can use debug step into. I'm going to use the F8 key because I'm on a Windows PC. So we're gonna select the sheet first. In fact, at this point, I'm gonna delete this select method. We don't need the select method anymore. We're trying to move away from selecting sheets from that direct referencing towards remote referencing, remote referencing, not selecting sheets. That's much more efficient, gonna allow the code uh, to run faster. Okay, so we're now on the NYC sheet, gonna move to the whole desktop here. We're now on the NYC sheet. We don't need to be on the sheet that VBA is actually interacting with. Using the F8 key, going through the code. Now we've got a message box come up and this message box says B2 TX customers. That's interesting for us. B2 TX customers seems to make sense. Now TX customers is the third sheet in the file and B2 is the beginning of the data set there. So that seems to make sense. I'd like to do some more advanced testing kind of later in the loop as well. In order to do that, I'm gonna put a stop. Let's put the stop here. And then briefly, I'm gonna comment out this message box line of code because I don't wanna go through each line of code. That's gonna take a very long time. 
Now I'm going to play the code a couple of times and then I'm going to reintroduce this uh, line of code here. So I've just deleted the inverted comma there, play it one more time and we can see the message boxes there and we're now on the MO sheet. Okay, and B3 looping through B4. Okay, now I've committed the cardinal sin of getting getting stuck in a loop here. So you could just keep hitting return until you get to the end of the loop. A trick here is just to hold down the escape key, hold down the escape key, then you'll get the usual uh, Excel error message. You can then just hit end or debug. Debug's gonna take us back uh, into the routine. So just holding down the escape key can get you out of one of those uh, interminable loops. Okay, this seems to be working well this loop within a loop mechanism, but you're saying to me, okay, Chris, so we've just got, you know, the cell address of each of the sheets. We're looping through those, looping through the sheets. Not very exciting. Well, again, we have to go back to, what are we actually trying to do here? <laughs> well, we're trying to create a list of unique names. These names we see on the sheet, they appear multiple times through the file, at least some of them do. So we just want a list of unique names. How are we gonna do that? Well, we're gonna combine formulae and VBA together in order to get this job done. You can create magic when you combine formulae and VBA together. Let's just do some copy pasting, do manually what we're trying to do. We want to go to the first sheet on the TX sheet, taking the first name here, which happens to be the name of my dog, Luna, taking the first name. And then we want to look at the database. Is the name already in the database? Because we only want unique names. Is the name already in the database? No, it's not. Let's just copy it in, okay? Then to, to the second entry, control C and control V, copy it in. To the third entry, control C, control V and copy it in like that. But rather than just copying it in, we need a mechanism to check, does this entry already appear in the database? Does this entry already appear in the database? So you might wanna stop the video and think about how you're gonna do that. I'm just gonna clear the formats of these cells, Alt-H-E-F on the Windows PC to clear the borders there. So how are we gonna set up this mechanism? How can we say to Excel, check if this value is already in this range? How might we do that? Well, let's have two helper cells, helper cells because they help the code up here. The target value, we're gonna input the target value there, and then we're gonna say already appears question mark. Okay, so for example, we're going to take in this case, the name Luna, put it in this cell. Now in this cell, we're going to put a formula to establish does this already appear. Now a formula that's going to help us here is count if. Count if tells us how many times in a range does a certain value appear. So if count if returns a value of zero, then the value, the name, is not already in the database. If countif returns a value of one, the name is already in the database, we don't want to uh, add the name to the database. So for countif, we're gonna need a range here. Now I'm gonna define this range manually. You could do some kind of dynamic definition here. I'm just gonna define it manually and say C7 to, let's say, how many names have got in the workbook? Under 2,000, I'm just gonna say 2,000. You could do a more dynamic definition using the techniques uh, we've covered here. So that's the range. Then the criteria is going to be the name. We're going to tell VBA to input the name there, to input the name in cell D2. Once the name is inputted, we're going to say this formula is going to update. That's going to tell us, that's going to tell us if the value is in the database or not. So Luna is in the database. If I just put a random name here, then we can see we've got a value of zero. If I put Elsie's name in here, just copy paste her in, we can see we've got a value of one. So we've created a mechanism, a formula based mechanism to establish if this person is already in the database. Combining that with VBA, and this is what we're going to do in the next video, it's beautiful when it all comes together, so powerful. Combining that mechanism with VBA is going to allow us to identify the unique names, the names we want to add to the database to create that list of unique names that we're working towards. I'll see you in the next video.